Well, hello, good night, everybody, and welcome to Prophetic Time. I'm Apostle Dr. Jay Caprieta. Thank you so much for joining me tonight on this broadcast. Um, tonight, uh, <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit about some things that uh, I've got in store for you. Go ahead, take this time to like, share, comment, invite, invite, invite your family, friends, loved ones. And uh, as we get started, so come on in. As you come on in, say hi to somebody. Uh, tell us where you're from, and uh, I'll be right back after this wonderful worship by Pastor Jennifer Lewin. Thank you.
Hey, everybody. Good night and welcome to Prophetic Time. I'm Apostle Jay Caprietta. Good to see you all on here tonight. <clears throat> many, many blessings to you. I want to welcome the first three people that joined here tonight. Um, we've got uh, Sherry Woolrich Johnson. Good to see you. Blessings to you. And then Shelly came on second. Hey, Shelly. Hope you're well. And then uh, third is Karen Reed. Blessings to you, Karen. I'm glad to see every one of you, everybody else that's on here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, with the love of God and thanks for sharing to the four groups there, Dr. Johnson. Um, and uh, blessings to everybody else. All right. So uh, tonight, um, I wanted to uh, just, you know, talk a little bit about uh, a few things that the Lord had put on my heart. Um, <clears throat> before I do that, I don't know if y'all been following, uh, this new law that was just, I guess, uh, refreshed. <laughs> um, it's, uh, the house of representatives on Monday passed a motion to table the motion to reconsider HB 7888, which passed on Friday to renew the FISA 702 and allow warrantless surveillance of innocent Americans. And uh, this was uh, a betrayal from the start. And uh, so they're basically given uh, the government authority that anytime they want, they could just go and spy on the citizens of America. And in the Constitution, it's illegal. According to our Constitution, it is absolutely illegal. And so you know, uh, begs the question, anything that they find through that means uh, cannot be used in court because it was illegally done. Um, because you have to have a reason. You have to have a reason to, uh, you know, um, burden of proof to to have that warrant issued. And so to have warrantless is access to people's information is absolutely illegal. Um, you know, uh, there was a, a mass murdering that happened in Sydney, Australia. The mass murder, murderer um, stabbed seven people. And uh, it turns out the, the guy that did the stabbing was a male escort who, had, who suffered with mental illness. And you're seeing a lot of this type of stuff with within the, you know, LGBT uh, community um, where a lot of this stuff, you know, the stabbings and the murders and all the, the violence, the mass shootings and all of that stuff is coming from that community. And um, I wanted to mention also something about, you know, what we talked about yesterday about the pastor that uh, had this man, uh, you know, swinging on a pole and all of that. Um, you know, I just want to double down on it that, you know, because I listened to a, a few different people and their spin on it. And some people believe that uh, Mark Driscoll was wrong because it's outside of the uh, the protocol for him to address such an issue in somebody else's church. Um, you know, even though I, 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 I agree with that to an extent, uh, the part that I don't agree with is that, um, you know, he, Mark Driscoll was invited to that church without knowledge of this poll dancer and so his name's on the flyer, um, you know, and um, Mark Driscoll's got quite a following. A lot of people believe in him. A lot of people follow him. And, um, you know, his name's on the flyer. So when something like that happens, uh, it would cause people to believe that Mark, maybe Mark Driscoll, you know, agrees with this. Because what if, what if the pa he had a talk with the pastor and the pastor never said a word about it? from the platform, um, you know, uh, then Mark, you know, people would have said, well, Mark Driscoll looks like Mark Driscoll agrees with this madness. Um, another thing that I discovered was this, that was kind of disappointing. M Mark Driscoll went back to the pastor Lindell and had a conversation with him in the building and Mark Driscoll apologized. <laughs> to the pastor. He apologized to him. And then they both uh, made up 
And uh, I believe Mark Driscoll went back up on the platform with the pastor and talked to the crowd. And, um, you know, some of the people say, well, you know, that's good. Thank God they worked things out. No, it's he apologized for basically rebuking openly, um, you know, that madness that was taking place in the church. And I, I just thought that maybe he should have had a backbone and not uh, give in to the pressures. Um, because what the pastor did was obviously wrong. You know, you don't invite a stripper and put a pole in a men's conference uh, and have a guy rip his shirt off, slide up and down the pole, and licking a knife uh, or a sword in a sensual manner and think that that's okay. It's just absolutely not okay. So, you know, I looked at all of that, and I was just like, uh, I'm very sad to see that uh, Mark Driscoll um, apologized. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Lord have mercy. Um, yeah, uh, it, it, does, it does remind me, uh, Dr. Johnson, about Andy Stanley uh, and his conference about maybe a year or two ago. Can't remember when. Um, but Andy Stanley, uh, who is a big name, his father uh, was a, a huge uh, preacher um, out of Georgia. And um, Charles Stanley, many of you know Charles Stanley. I've listened to Charles Stanley um, many times, you know, in my youth. I've, I've, you know, I used to like listening to Charles Stanley. And then his son comes along and, um, you know, has a, uh, a conference that's just... Uh, full of LGBT stuff all over it, um, LGBT speakers. And it was just wild, crazy. Um, and, um, you know, so people, there's certain people that didn't, did not speak up about it. They didn't speak, a, you know, speak out against it. Uh, you know, and sometimes these people don't speak out against these things because they're somehow friends, you know, with Andy Stanley or they're trying to get on his platform because it's a huge platform. You know, and they don't really speak out about stuff like this. Um, but you know, like in this in this instance, Mark Driscoll uh, spoke out about it, and so it opened up for a lot of people to talk about it. But if Mark Driscoll never said a word, would these people have spoken out about it? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it would have had the same effect. Um, you know, and that's what happens a lot. You know, sometimes. Um, you know, people, these same bloggers that are talking about it, like, you know, with their big followings and everything, they're not just going to jump on it um, if they saw it and nobody else is talking about it. They're only going to talk about it, uh, you know, just like a Mark Driscoll. When when the whole thing with Andy Stanley was happening, uh, they were crickets. A lot of them, were, the bloggers were crickets. You didn't hear anything from them. Uh, but uh, I'm telling you. We, we're at a time, folks, where we're going to have to make decisions about our faith, where we stand. And um, you have to make you have to make some solid decisions. You know, are you for the whole LGBT movement in the church? Uh, well, you, you know, you might not be, uh, you know, for it in the secular realm, but there's a push in the church realm um, that people are, uh, you know, softening up to this whole LGBT movement in the church. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to make a decision where you stand. You're going to have to make a decision where you stand on entertainment in the church, just like the likes of what you saw at the John Lindell uh, Strongman Conference in Missouri. You're going to have to make a decision where you stand on that. Um, otherwise, you're just going to be you know, thrown to and fro with every wind of doctrine that comes comes along. You're just going to be thrown every which way, not knowing where to land. And, um, you know, we, we've got to get to the place where we know who we are, folks, where we know who we are in the Lord. Um, you know, um, I really believe that God is doing something in this season um, where there's going to be a huge push. And uh, there's going to be a push for the supernatural. There's going to be a huge push for the supernatural power of God to be seen in the church. 
because a lot of it is entertainment right now. And uh, I know what the Lord has called me to. And, you know, he's called me to, to bring the message of truth to the people and to back it up with signs, wonders, and miracles. And so we're going to see, we're going to see, especially in an essential church, you're going to see a lot of supernatural things happening. Supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles. People that are struggling, you know, financially, people that are struggling in their health, um, people that are struggling in, in, in different areas of their lives, whether it's with your children or your parents, your spouses, whatever, you're going to see a supernatural push where God is going to start to do things supernaturally for you in your life. That's, wh that's where I'm standing right now. And uh, I certainly stand against all this entertainment stuff that they're trying to bring, the secularized e entertainment into the church. I stand against that very, very firmly. I think it's uh, trying to derail people of their identity in Christ. That's what's happening. The devil is coming as a, as a tempter to throw people off of the mark of where God has called them to be. And we're not going to allow it. Uh, I'm not going to allow it in my life. I'm not going to allow it in our church. And um, I, I believe that God will honor our ability to, to stand against um, all of this madness that we're seeing in the church realm. So tonight, um, you know, I wanted to just to uh, kind of continue on in what I was talking about. I've been talking about, you know, our identity in Christ and knowing who we are. Knowing who we are in Christ is very, very important because Satan, uh, he uh, went after Adam and Eve in the garden. Y'all remember that story? And he said to them, you shall not surely die. He used the word not. And God said, you shall surely die. But he added one word to this to the word of God, and that threw them off, and uh, you know caused them to be kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And um, Satan shows up again, um, you know, to Jesus on that mountain, and and uh, tries to tempt him. And he says, "Why don't you uh, turn these stones into bread? You know, if you be the Son of God, if you be the Son of God." So he's asking that question to him, trying to throw him off as well putting a question in his mind uh, as to if he should question who he is in Christ. And um, after that scenario happened, I love what, what took place next in Mark chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. It says, immediately, Holy Spirit from within drove him out of the, drove him out of the, wild, out of the wilderness or the desert. Um, but in this scripture, that's the amplified version. Let me just read the other uh, New King James Version, um, because that it gives a different uh, um, look at what just took place. Um, sometimes you got to be careful with the different translations <laughs> and the transliterations. Um, and it says that immediately the spirit driveth him in the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan and was with the wild beast and the angels ministered unto him. Um, so, you know, the spirit uh, that drove him out, um, angels are spirits. And you'll see later and even in that chapter that the angels of God, uh, they actually carried him and also gave strength to him. Uh, the work of the Holy Spirit is to give us a nudging, to whisper to us, to speak to us, to pull on our hearts, to convict our hearts of our righteousness, of holiness, of godliness. Um, you, know, you know, the work of the Holy Spirit is powerful in our lives. Um, the angels are the operatives in the kingdom of God. They, they can lift you up. They can give you strength. They can move you. Um, they can do a lot of things, even with our physical being, to help us uh, move out of the way of, of accidents, of incidents of move out of a region of you know that is uh you know just to get away from an act of terrorism for example they can also speak to us minister to us um you know so sometimes it's uh you know it's challenging for some people to decipher whether it's holy spirit speaking to them or an angel speaking to them 
And um, they're, they're the only way to know the difference is when you are prayed up, uh, when you do have a relationship with God, and when you are always in the word of God, hungry for more. Um, so I love how Jesus answered the temptation by Satan. You know, uh, he said, he answered it with an, it is written. <laughs> it is written. And that's the way how we got to answer uh, to Satan. Anytime he attacks us, anytime he comes to tempt us, uh, we've got to find some, it is written. <laughs> Um, because according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Amen, somebody. It is the sword of the spirit. So if you need a spiritual weapon to fight off Satan, it is the sword. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. And, and so it says it here in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god amen so that's that's the offensive spiritual weapon that we have is the word of god that is what destroys the work of satan in our lives and you know what else when you speak the word of god the angels of god they are there listening to hear the word of god that comes out of your mouth and they take that word and they bring it to pass oh glory be to god um you know uh since Jesus uh, was the word of God, uh, in the, it says in John 1, verses 1, in the beginning before all time, Jesus was, was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God himself. And that's the amplified version. You know, anything he would have spoken would have been the word. Anything he would have spoken would have been the word. He could have said, boo, and the devil would have to go. Uh, yet he quoted the word of God three times to Satan. He quoted it three times. So this gives us a great assurance that when we speak the written word of God over our circumstances, uh, Satan has to bow to the word of God, you know, so it's very important to know the word, to get to know the word more and more. Um, Jesus, when he was in the uh, the face of, when he was in uh, in the face of the greatest temptations that Satan had to offer, did not need to say anything that was not already recorded in Scripture. Isn't that powerful? He didn't need to come up with something else. He just needed to say what was already in Scripture. <laughs> That should be a lesson for us. Uh, you know, you don't have to seek to, to try and figure something out um, or reinvent the wheel. Uh, you know, if it is written, use what's written in Scripture. It should work just fine. Um, so, um, it's quite likely that when Jesus Christ returns to the earth, and destroys his enemy, which is uh, something that he is slated to do. Uh, I believe it's in Revelation chapter 19. Um, he, I believe he will just speak the word that was already given in Scripture. Because the word that was given in Scripture regarding the future, even the future of Satan, the beast, the false prophets, all of those words have already been written um, Everything has already been planned out and mapped out. And so all he would have to do is, 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 is basically um, speak the word that's already written. And everything will come to pass. He wouldn't have to physically fight. You know, he, Jesus does not have to fight Satan. Um, some people have this uh, idea in their minds that Jesus is going to, uh, you know, fight Satan. And um, Satan is so strong that. You know, perhaps, you know, we'll see it's like a boxing match and we're going to see, you know, kind of like Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield, who's going to win. No, it's it's uh, it's quite not like that. It's uh, Jesus is God. He's he's creator. That's what Colossians one says. Um, so he's created everything for himself um, by him and for him. <laughs> so uh, Satan is no match for Jesus Christ. 
no match whatsoever. Uh, so this is why when you try to read the Bible, Satan always shows up with some sleepiness and some drowsiness. Uh, or he might just even use somebody to make a phone call to you. Um, you know, you might be trying to read the scripture and 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 then you're like, oh, I can't understand anything. This is just not, I can't, why can't I understand what's being said here? Uh, Satan is trying to block your mind. And sometimes it depends on what you're reading too. You know, some people have this notion that I'm going to start reading from the book of Genesis all the way down to Revelation. Um, you know, I would recommend you starting in the book of Matthew in the New Testament and go all the way down, uh, you know, and then go after you've read that, then go to the book of Genesis. Because uh, Paul said, uh, he says, even today, as you read the old covenant, uh, there is a veil that comes over the reader. Uh, so. So sometimes you might be reading the old covenant and you're like, why is it I can't understand what's happening here? Why is it I can't see? Because a veil comes over you. Um, so that's why it's it's important to read um, you know, the New Testament, understand it first. If you're uh, you know, a new believer in Christ, you're trying to jump into the old testament, you know, you might get you might get a, a little bit uh, thrown off by by what you're reading. Um so you've got to have an understanding of, of the dispensation that we're living in as well. Um, all right. So God has given us his word as a weapon. His word is a mighty weapon for us. And so when we speak the word in faith, um, you know, faith, like I said to you, it's not just a feeling. It's not an excitement. It's not a zeal. Faith is 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 an is an understanding. It's having knowledge and understanding of of what you're believing for. That's when true faith comes, is when you have knowledge and understanding of what you're believing for. Because sometimes you could believe for something, but it's if you don't have that 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 knowledge and the understanding, and sometimes if you don't even have that experience of seeing God do something. It 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 uh, many times it's very hard to see the thing manifested. Um, so you know it's just like healing. If you don't know that the scripture says that Jesus <laughs> healed everyone, every single person that came to him, if you don't have that the answer to this question, how many does Jesus want to heal? If you don't have the answer to that question, then it's hard for you to have faith. If I ask you that question, how many people does Jesus want to heal? And you you say, well, I know that some people get healed and, and others don't because I've been to some healing services and I've seen some people get healed and some people did not get healed. So I, I think that sometimes Jesus just kind of pick and chooses who he wants to heal. Well, you got the wrong answer. And that's why many people do not see healing manifested is because of their of what their understanding of things are. <laughs> they, 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 because they don't have a revelation of the truth. And so they, they have questions and the questions causes them to doubt. When I, last time I checked the scriptures, every person that went to Jesus for healing, he healed them all. And you know what, what's funny is that he also healed them instantly. So instant healing is something that God wants for us. He does. Some 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 healing might take place over, you know, like just like that. Boom. Person gets healed instantly. Uh, some people might take an hour. Some people might take two hours. I remember praying for someone in our church not too long ago. And uh, they didn't feel any different at the moment that I prayed for them. But I said, you're healed. In Jesus' name, you're healed. And uh, shortly after the service, they came to me and said, well, Dr. J, I am actually healed. I just realized that I got healed after sitting in the service for an hour and a half. I realized after the service was done that I got healed. And so sometimes, let me tell you, sometimes it takes 
right there instantly boom on the spot you can feel it you could see it your miracle happens right there right away and sometimes it takes an hour sometimes it takes people 24 hours for them to notice the difference but the bible is very certain on the word of god as with regards to our healing how many people does god want to heal every person that went to him you look at it throughout uh the miracles of jesus he healed them all every single one that came to him he healed them all he even healed people that were far away <laughs> you know uh like the centurion uh and his servant his servant was far away and jesus spoke a word and healed him being miles and miles away so god has given us his his uh this mighty weapon of his word when we speak the word in faith hell shakes see satan and his demons have already experienced what the word can do and they are afraid of it they know the word's power and they try to they try to hide it they try to to, to confuse us about it but we need to know it in a more intimate way so that we can use the word which is the sword of the spirit against the enemy in our life. Did you know that Satan's power is limited? <laughs> Satan is powerful. He's a powerful being, but his power is limited. In Luke chapter 4, verse 13, it says, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. See, he came up against Jesus. He tried to tempt Jesus, but he was not successful. His power is limited in what he can do. And so he had to depart from Jesus and fly away. So his power is limited. It's, it's, I'm not saying that he's not powerful. I'm not saying that he couldn't offer Jesus the world because Satan could not lie to Jesus. Jesus is the truth. So it would be stupid of him to lie to Jesus. So could Satan have given uh, the lure of the world to Jesus? Yes, he had the power to do that. What do you think is happening in, in Hollywood right now? You're hearing a lot of stories right now about Justin Bieber. You're hearing stories about P. Diddy. You're hearing stories about Meek Mill and uh, a lot of people in Hollywood that are that are um, have sold their soul to Satan. That's all real, my friends. There's a lot of people that have been lured into darkness by the temptation of Satan, giving them the world, making them rich and famous. It's real. You know, whether it's Katy Perry saying she sold her soul to the devil, <laughs> you know, it's on video. Or any of these other, you know, actors and, you know, musicians and whatnot. Many of them have sold their soul to Satan because he appeared to them just like Satan appeared to Jesus. So he has power, but his power is limited. His power is limited because of the word of God. So Satan, what he did with Jesus was that he exhausted his arsenal that he had of temptations on Jesus, and then he had to leave. So he basically did all he can do, but was unsuccessful. You know, we need to stop giving Satan too much credit. I did a couple of videos where I said, shift your focus from demons to angels. <laughs> you know, because the angels of God, they're just sitting around and Christians are ignoring them and, uh, you know, don't know that they exist and don't know that they help them on a daily basis. Um, we need to ignore uh, Satan, not give him too much credit. Spend some, spend more time, you know, giving credit to God, Holy Spirit and his angels and the Lord Jesus Christ. Spend more time doing that than giving credit to Satan. 
It's like when you give credit to Satan, it's kind of like you empowering him, making him feel special, making him feel like he's succeeding in whatever it is that he's doing. So we we mistakenly give him too much credit. You know, he does not have a limitless number of temptations that he can pull on us. He's limited. There's, there's one or two things that you can tell him that will make him flee. That's in the word of God. Standing your ground with him will cause him to flee. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's what Jesus did. He resisted the devil and the devil fleed. Many people give in to the devil. <laughs> Many people give in to the temptation. And then they open up doors into their lives, into other areas. And before you know it, Satan becomes more powerful in their life and grips onto them. 1 John 2.16 in the Amplified Version, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, craving for sensual gratification, and the lust of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind, and the pride of life, Assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are from the world itself. And so, you know, here are the areas that the devil tempts us. Number one, he tempts us with the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. And that's a real temptation that happens in many people's lives on a daily basis. Number two, the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. That's another powerful thing that Satan tempts us with. And so, you know, literally, what has become the biggest thing today in our world? The biggest uh, thing in our world today is cell phones. Right there, you cover number one and number two, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. And also number three, the pride of life. How many people have you seen online sharing their amazing life on the internet? How they're doing this and they're doing that. They're traveling here, traveling there. They just did this amazing thing and that amazing thing, the pride of life. They're just so prideful in everything that they're accomplishing. And they want the world to know. So the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are the things that the devil tempts us with. And um, But thinking that Satan is limitless in his temptations and in his ability, you know, you're just making him bigger than he is. He does some simple stuff, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and catches people with it. Just some really simple things. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, um, the truth is that there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So even when you are being tempted by Satan, God will not give you, he will not allow for you to have a temptation that is so uh, strong that you're not able to break from it, that you're not able to bear. Amen. Ooh. Satan would like you to think that he is tougher than he really is. Stop buying into that narrative that Satan is like God, because that's literally what you're doing. You put Many people put Satan on the same level as God, and he's not on the same level like God. He's not even on the same level as the angels that they call stars. <laughs> there are different... Uh, uh, different sects of angels, right? 
Remember I told you all a few weeks ago that there's an innumerable host of angels. That's biblical. Um, well, when Satan took one third of the angels, he did not take the angels that were higher than him. He took the angels that were in the league with him and lower. <laughs> there are angels that are much greater than Satan, that are on a higher in a higher heaven than Satan was. And that's why he wanted to go where the stars were and also to the higher heavens where Jesus was. And um, he couldn't he couldn't go. And because he wanted to uh, break protocol and do that, God kicked him out of heaven. He wanted more and more power. So Satan would like you to think that he's tougher than he really is. One of his greatest, um, you know, weapons is intimidation. And, you know, you have, you have preachers that would preach the fear of Satan into you. <laughs> that, would make, that would make you look at Satan as God. And so instead of people actually fearing God, they're fearing Satan. You know, and that, that's a real legitimate thing today. There are many Christians that are fearing Satan more than they fear God. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, you know, because Satan is one of the greatest intimidators. But he has been defeated. The Bible says that he's like a roaring lion, you know, seeking whom he may devour. But his teeth has been pulled. <laughs> Uh, you know, he could be a roaring lion, but if he has no teeth, how's he going to destroy you? His claws have been ripped out. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. First Peter, it says here, uh, First Peter 5, 8. Now he can only roar as a, as a lion seeking to devour. Um, you know, uninformed souls who do not know their authority in Christ. That's that's who he can roar against, is those who are uninformed, those who do not know their authority in Christ. That is who Satan can actually destroy and devour. First Peter 5, 8 in the Amplified says, be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious at all times. For that, for that enemy of yours, the devil roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and to devour. <laughs> Today, realize that Satan is fighting you. Whatever Satan is fighting you with is only temporary. So don't quit. In due season, you will reap if you faint not. That's in Galatians 6, 9. 6, 9. You will reap in due season if you do not faint, if you do not give up. All right? Let me read it in the Amplified Version. Galatians 6, 9, it says, And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. Amen. Amen. All right. Do not fear that toothless, clawless devil. All right. Um, he is uh, he's roaming around trying to put fear in people, trying to put fear in the believers. But he is an angel. He's a demonic angel. And uh, you got to shift your focus from the demons to the angels of God. Shift your focus. Of course, Christ is the king of, of, of the kingdom of God. He is our king. He is our Lord. But he's got operatives. And Satan has got operatives in the kingdom of darkness. And they're both in our realm moving around in our realm, freely. 
And so we got to be mindful that we have authority in the word of God. When we speak the word of God, it is like a sword. It is like a sword. And that's why it's important to get to know what the word says so that we can use it just like Jesus used it three times against Satan and he defeated him. He said, it is written, <laughs> man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That means we have the word of God that is our sword against Satan. Use it in battle and fight against the enemy. Mm -hmm. Amen. I hope you all got something from this tonight. Uh, I'm going to pray for you all right now. Uh, so, Father God, those that are putting prayer requests on here for their sons and for their daughters, for their children, for their husbands and their wives, uh, for their grandchildren, Father, I pray that healing deliverance will be administered to them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles will be performed right now under the authority of my voice. Lord, I pray for signs, wonders, and miracles to take place in the lives of those who have requested prayer on this channel. Holy Spirit, may you move mightily in their midst. May the angels of God take charge over emergency situations. And Father God, we thank you for your word of truth. And we use it as a sword against the enemy tonight. No weapons that is formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment shall be condemned. By the stripes that was on Jesus' back, we are healed. We are whole. We are delivered. I can do all things through Christ. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Our God shall provide every one of our needs according to his riches and glory. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I pray for your business as well. Uh, Sarah, I pray right now that God will touch your business in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, and all of the prayer requests came forth tonight. May miracle signs and wonders take place in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God is about to do some miracles. Hallelujah. Psalms 91. I want you to sow into this word tonight. Uh, you know, grab all of your seed and sow. Sow into this word tonight. Uh, and watch God do some mirac miraculous things in your life. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High and rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save me from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover me and my family with his feathers, and under his wings we will find refuge. His faithfulness will be our shield and rampart. I will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me or my family. I will only observe with my eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and I make the most high my dwelling, no harm will overtake us. No disaster will come near our homes. For he will command his angels concerning us to guard us in all our ways. They will lift us up in their hands so we will not strike our foot against a stone. I will tread on the lion and the cobra. I will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because you love me, says the Lord, I will rescue you. I will protect you, for you acknowledge my name. You will call on me, and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. And with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation, says the Lord. Amen and amen. All right. Uh, as you sow tonight, 
you can text the word give to 844-583-7012 uh, or you can give online go to etribe.org and uh forward slash giving um, or you can send a check to us at 6700 Denton Highway, Suite J, Fort Worth, Texas, 76148. All right. Um, plan a visit to come to Essential Church right here in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, we are here Sundays at 10. And then also, um, if you'd like to join our Bible study tomorrow night, we'll be there at 7 p.m. live and in person. All right. Um, so I love you with the love of God. And go ahead and say with me, I'm a leader because God says I am. I live a life of excellence where all things are possible. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I am blessed. Point to me, say, Apostle, you're blessed. Thank you. We are all blessed. So stay perpetually blessed. Love you with the love of God. A wonderful night, and I'll see you tomorrow night for a Bible study. Stay blessed.